So today I'm going to show you how to use the school's Canon 650D HDR SLR cameras. Um, I know that cameras have different buttons and different menu functions in various locations, but I think once you understand the basics of um, this kind of middle-level DSLR camera, you should be able to uh, translate that over to any other kind of Canon camera or Nikon camera or Sony or whatever else. So here's what we have. This is the basic kit. Um, this is a 650D. We'll go ahead and see what's inside. All right, so we have the camera with the strap. It's always good to have a spare or backup battery, especially when you are working in video later on. And we also have the battery charger. Uh, it's important to always make sure that your batteries are fully, fully charged because you never know um, how long you're going to be shooting um, throughout the day. Especially if you're working with video, you want to make sure you have both of the batteries charged. All right, well, we won't worry about these right now. I'm just going to be talking about the um, HD SLR camera. Um, so I've already explained in another video um, what DSLR cameras are, what mirrorless cameras are and so on. So I'm just going to focus now on this Canon 650D. So first of all, check for your charger. Make sure you have the SD card. If you flip the camera to the side right here, slide that open. This right here is the SD card. So we have the SD card that goes right in the side. It's spring loaded. This one is 32 gigabytes. You can take that out and then put that into the back of the camera or put it into a card reader and pull off your files that way. Um, it does come with what's called a kit lens. So this is the lens that comes with the camera when it was bought this way. This is an 18 to 135 lens. Uh, you can see here on top of the camera, it says 18. And if we twist the barrel, it zooms or extends out to 135 millimeters. Okay. Front of the lens, there is a lens cap. We can take that off. And also we have a special filter on the front, which can be unscrewed or screwed on. I would suggest this leave it on there. It helps protect the lens. It also helps protect from dust going inside. But what you can, maybe if you're shooting different types of uh, scenes, you can put different types of filters on the front. But for now, this is basically just a clean lens to make sure that um, no dust gets in there or it doesn't get damaged in any way. It's always good to keep the strap on the camera and you're going to put that around your neck or across your shoulder. All right, now we're going to look at some basic functions of how we can work with this camera. Now this is an interchangeable lens. That means we can remove this lens and we can put another lens on for different types of, um, let's say, prime lenses, which are maybe only, let's say, 28 millimeters or 30 millimeters or 50 millimeters. Or we can also put a variety of different zoom lenses on here. And to be able to remove and put a new, new lens on, you need to click this button right here. That's on the side. It's right next to this white dot. It's a button right there. Push it down. Keep it down. Grab the lens and twist it and then pull it off. Okay? So you're going to twist it and then pull it off. To put the lens back on, look right here on the side of every lens should have kind of a white dot like this. And here inside the camera, there's also kind of a white dot, it's a white square. So what you need to do is you need to line up that white square with this white square. You line those up, lens is in place, twist it until you hear the click. Okay, and that's how you know that you've got, you can change the lenses back and forth. Now, one thing to be careful about is that it is fine, it is okay from time to time if you maybe wipe down the lens with a soft cloth. Don't put any kinds of liquids or anything on here. You could use just a, a plain, usually it's better to use what's called a dust-free cloth just to wipe it down to get any dust spots off. What you don't want to do, you don't want to take the lens off and you don't want to stick anything down in here on the mirror, all right? Because once you start sticking things in there, we start coming up with all kinds of problems. Possibly could damage the inside of the camera. But if there is dust inside the camera, I'll show you how we can get rid of that rather than having to stick anything down inside of the body. All right, a few functions. 
We're going to work a lot with these various knobs and buttons, and I'll show you how they work. And we're also going to work quite a lot with the back, looking at our screen here, and working with the menu. So let's turn on the camera first. This command dial right here, that allows us to turn the camera on. Switch it on once, that's for still photos, push it up twice, and that is going to now shoot video. And you can see that we have a live shot on the back of here, but we're not going to do video for now. So let's just leave it on on. Okay, as soon as we turn it on on, we notice that there are all kinds of various um, icons and figures and buttons um, that we can change. Now, this is a touch screen, so you can click on these various items. All right, Q allows you to change various things, or we can use the menu button. All right, I'm going to find it a little bit easier that we're going to use the menu button. Down here on the lower left part of our touch screen, that is our battery sign. So right now we're at a full charge, which is good. It's always good to have that. Now, if you, if you want, you don't always have to have this panel flipped out. You can actually twist it and put it on the camera like that. You can actually hide it completely if you want as well. You probably want to keep it open and use it, especially when you're shooting video because you're going to be able to want to look at the back panel. But when you're mostly shooting pictures, you're probably just going to want to look directly through the eyepiece right here. So you want to keep that close to your face. You don't want to frame photos in the back. You want to be able to look through here. All right. One of the things that you probably want to do before you start, you want to make sure it's in a language that you can understand. So if we click the menu button, which is right here in the upper left, push that down once, we're going to have lots of different choices, some camera choices, some playback choices, and some um, other kind of what are called wrenches. So those are specifics that are not necessarily about taking pictures, but how to change different things, different settings. So to change the language, especially if it's if this is already in a language that you don't understand, that could be a problem. So we need to change it to a language that we can understand. So I'll give you that tip right now, that clue. Change the language. On your menu, you go to the second wrench. So you're going to go to right here in these yellow parts. Second from the bottom, right there. You click Set, and that allows you now to change the language. And of course, there are various Asian languages here as well. In my case, I'm going to stick with English. Now, what you also want to do is, before you start taking pictures, you probably want to format the card. That means clear off the card to make sure that there's nothing on there. So let's go ahead and format the card. This time we go to the first wrench, very, very bottom. Hit Set. Go to OK. Set. OK. Now it's formatted our card. We can actually see if we have anything on here by pushing this play button. This will allow us to review if there's any photos on this card. So I push here and you'll see it says no image. Okay, so we've got nothing on here right now. Let's go back to menu. Another thing we want to do is, as I mentioned, there's a possibility that you might actually get dust on the front of this lens, which we can clean off. But there might be a possibility also, that could happen, it's very rare, that you're going to get lens on this, I mean, get, get dust on the sensor which is inside of the camera. And that we can't touch. We don't want to stick anything in there. We don't want to stick any cloth in there. We don't want to stick Q-tips or anything else in there. So there's actually a way to clean off the dust on the sensor. So I'm going to leave it flat like this on the table because it requires that so it can do what's called a quick vibration of the sensor. I'm going to go to Menu. I'm going to go to the third wrench. Now I can use this wheel, or I can use the buttons, or I can actually go by hand. Sensor cleaning, second from the bottom. Hit OK. Clean now. Click that. Hit OK. And it's going to take a few minutes, and you're going to hear it click. All right. So now the sensor should be clean, and hopefully there should be no more dust on either the front lens or the sensor that's inside of the camera. OK. So let's continue. Another thing we also want to make sure of at the very beginning is I mentioned before, these cameras store all kinds of information every time you take a picture, and that's called metadata. And we want to make sure that some of the metadata is correct when we initially take the picture. Now, you can 
set up GPS setting. You have to have a special device on here that's going to record your GPS. But we also want to make sure that we're recording or we're shooting and it's going to store in the metadata the correct date and time. So on the menu, we're going to go to the second wrench, third from the bottom, and here's where we can change the day, the month, the year, and the time. And if I'm looking now, today is the 24th of October, and it is 3.53 p.m., so I don't need to change anything right now. I can just hit OK. Sometimes if you're moving from one time zone to the next, or you're traveling around the world, you want to make sure that you change the settings correctly. Or also, if perhaps you're in a country that has a change in daylight savings times, that means you need to go forwards or backwards also in time. A few other things that we want to change that I think is how you should work as a photographer. Now, currently there are some preset settings on this camera that I really don't think are very optimal or very good for us. And one of them is called the image review. So let's go to menu. Let's go to the first camera. And on the first camera, we have one, two, three, fourth down, we have this labeled image review. It's curtain set for two seconds. What that means is, if I'm gonna take a picture, and you'll see I'm gonna take a picture inside my office here. I'm just gonna point my camera that way. I'm just gonna take a picture. What that does is it automatically shows on the back here. Okay, let me do that again. Let me change a few things. I'm gonna take a picture. Okay, and automatically shows on the back. I don't want that. I wanna turn that off. Because what I don't wanna do is, I don't want you getting used to constantly taking a picture and then looking. Taking a picture and then looking, okay? I want you to spend more time paying attention to what's going on out here rather than what's going on in the back of here. Yes, you can look on that every once in a while, but you don't need to look at it all the time. So we're gonna turn the image review off. So menu, image review, off. So now if I take a picture, nothing shows up in the back, okay? I take a picture and nothing shows up on the back. That's exactly what I want. If you do wanna see the pictures that you took, all you need to do is just push the play button. That's the picture that I took and then I can move forwards or backwards in those various pictures. I can also hit my trash button. I want to erase. Yes, I want to hit erase. I trashed it. Trash, 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 erase, trash, erase, trash, erase. Okay, so I'm now cleared off all the images again. Okay, so you want to make sure that um, you turn that to off. Next thing to look at is we want to look at the quality of the pictures that this camera is going to take. Let's go to menu. First camera on the very top, image quality. Okay, as you can see, there are all kinds of settings here. And so we can take raw pictures. Raw pictures um, is a, an uncompressed picture. So it's basically all the information that comes into the camera is recorded by the sensor. That's actually really, really good. But it's also a very large file. It's a very, very large file. It could be 30, 40, 50 megabytes in size. Then we have something with raw and a large JPEG. So a JPEG is a compressed picture. It takes about maybe 10 to 20% of the information that comes in and it creates a picture. So we can actually record two pictures, a raw file and a large JPEG. For your purposes, maybe while you're just doing assignments, you might just want to use this large JPEG function. That's a medium JPEG function, and that's a small JPEG function. So what that will do, it'll create a smaller file size, and it'll also create a physically smaller size in pixels, and you can see the pixel information right there. Every time I go up, it creates a larger pixel. And that's basically gonna create an 18 megabyte file out of this large JPEG. If I go to raw, it's probably gonna be much larger than that. All right, so we're not gonna go with raw, we're just gonna go with large. We're gonna set it for okay. Again, this is just for if you're going to do an assignment. If you're gonna shoot for professionally for somebody, then you probably will want to shoot raw because raw allows you to do much more editing later on in the software and much more quickly and much more easily. With a, with a compressed JPEG file, your option of changing the, the file, maybe doing color correction or doing exposure correction, those types of things makes it much more difficult. All right, we also got something that's called white balance. Now white balance, I'm gonna push this button here. Let's get information up, white balance. As you can see, there's a bunch of icons here. 
<clears throat> Currently it's set for AWB, that means automatic white balance. So to explain white balance is as light comes into the camera, the camera is going to look at the light and it's going to determine what's the temperature or color of the light. So all light that is in our world has temperature and color. Incandescent light bulbs, the old screw-in light bulbs um, with the filaments or candles, those are an orange light. And you'll probably notice that if you go into churches or if you go to mosque or something like that and there's a candle, it's a very orange kind of light. Light that comes from the long cathode ray tubes, right, the long tubes that you see in ceilings, that's a green light. Light in shadows, um, LED lights, that's a blue light. All right? So we want to make sure that when we are shooting in certain lighting conditions, that we are not creating a picture that's got a wrong color tint on top. So we can deliberately choose these various functions. For example, that's if it's sunny outside, that's if you're shooting in the shade, that's if it's a cloudy day, incandescent light bulb, fluorescent light bulbs, and if you're using a flash. These cameras are pretty smart. So let's just stick with automatic white balance. Most of the things that you will probably be shooting ever in your life with these types of cameras, the camera can figure it out and do it correctly. So we'll leave it at automatic white balance and hit OK. If the camera does record something a little bit to me too orange or a little bit too green or a little bit too blue, even with a JPEG, we can do a few corrections on it later on in the software. Another thing that I want you to do is these cameras do come, not every camera, but this one, if you push this button right here, comes with a pop-up flash, right? That's the flash that pops up. Okay, push the button right there, it's a pop-up flash. Now, these cameras are already set so that when it thinks the scene is too dark, it's going to be underexposed, your picture is going to be too dark, the flash will automatically pop up, and when you take the picture, it'll spray, spray flash everywhere. Um, most photojournalists, when they're working in natural environments, they're not going to use a flash. Sometimes we will need to use a flash, but then often what they will do is they will use what's called the hot shoe, which is this little area right here which is, has um, different electronic connections, and you would slide a flash on top of here, a very big flash, okay? You would put a flash up on top of here, and then you'd use this flash. Very seldomly would somebody use this flash. It's okay, but it, it's, it's not really great because it basically just projects a bunch of bright light straight ahead, which causes unflattering kind of very bluish pictures. So I want you to actually turn the flash function off so it doesn't do it automatically. We're gonna turn it completely off. It's often it's best to just take your pictures in what's called the available light, the light that is in the location. Right? To turn the flash off, and we're going to go to menu, go to the first camera, the very bottom, it says flash control. Flash firing, currently it's enabled, we're going to disable that, turn it off. Let's return back to our menu. Another thing I want you to do is turn off this beeping sound. You've probably noticed that when I take a picture, I keep pushing this button right here. That's what's called the shutter release button. You take a picture, you push it, and it takes a picture. And it's also our autofocus button, and I'll get to autofocus in a little while. So if you want to take a picture with autofocus on, you push the button halfway, lightly, it autofocuses, and then you keep your finger on the button, push it all the way down, and it takes the picture. Again, lightly, all the way down, it takes the picture. So you'll notice that every time I push lightly, you hear this beeping sound? Okay. That means it's auto-focused and you can take the picture. That can be very, very distracting if you're trying to work as a photojournalist or documentary photographer and you don't want to attract attention. So every time you push this, it's going to make a sound. All right. We want to eliminate that. We want to take that sound away. So let's go back to the menu. We're going to disable that beep. First camera. Second from the top, enable, disable. Okay, so now when we do the autofocus, all right, you don't hear that beep anymore. Perfect. Now, there's different ways that these cameras can meter. And what I mean by metering is we want to make sure that we are exposing our pictures so that they're not too light and they're not too dark, but they're just right. Okay, and to do that, we need to think about how the camera is going to record the light that comes in to the front of the lens. All right. 
Later on, I'll talk a little bit more about this command dial. We have different ways of deciding how we're going to expose a picture. But for right now, we're not going to think about manual. We'll think about AV, TV, and P, which is program mode. So the light comes in, the camera's going to see the light, and it's now going to decide how bright or how dark that picture should be, how fast the shutter speed should be, what kind of um, aperture should be in this lens. And I'll explain all those things later on. So we want to make, we want to, again, most of the time, 95% of the time, we want to just have what's called have a balanced metering. So we want to think of all the light that goes into this lens, right? We want the camera to look at all of that light and to make what's called an average for our frame. All right, so let's go on the back again. So there's different ways that we can get to our metering mode. We can actually get onto it right here, all right? We can just push right there. That is our <clears throat> metering mode if we want to work on that, okay? Different ways to do that. Or, <clears throat> let's go to the menu. We go to the menu, we go to the second camera, and we go on the very bottom, metering mode. So this is balanced light. This is looking more at more on the center of a frame, right? The middle, the middle of a frame. And this one right here is called spot metering. So it looks at really only the very, very, very small spot in the center of the camera. Let's leave it on evaluative metering and hit OK. All right, as you may have noticed, there's a way to get to many of these functions by pushing buttons or going through the menu or pushing straight back here. For example, we can go to automatic white balance, all right? Then we can change our functions here. On our currently it's set on auto. We can also get to what kind of the quality of the picture we want to do. So we can change that immediately right there. Okay. We're not going to we'll just leave that setting as it is. And there's a few other functions. We're not going to worry about all those right now. All right. You remember I may have mentioned to you before something that's called the rule of thirds. Now what's great about these cameras, this is often better for when you're shooting video is where you've got the choice or the option of turning on the rule of thirds grid. So let's go to the fourth camera, grid display. So here we've got choices of grids. Either it's off, we can do rule of thirds, or we can do multiple grids. So let's leave it on the rule of thirds. All right. So if we want to later on, if when you're, you're shooting, um, when you're looking through there, you can see that grid, or if you're doing what's called a live display, you can look at that grid as well. When you take a picture, I'll just take a picture like this, and you review that picture again, that's the picture I just took. Now there's a bunch of information in here that I might be interested in. I can push info, and it's gonna go through various different iterations of this picture. It tells me it shot at 1 8th of a second, f4.5, I'll explain that. It's seven out of seven pictures. I can click info again. That gives me a little bit smaller version, then it shows me what's called a histogram. And this histogram, which I'll explain more when we start working in Photoshop, tells me this is the absolute black, the darkest part of my picture over here, and the absolute whites, that's the brightest part of my picture. So it shows me a curve of the brightest and darkest spots of my picture. Okay, so that might be interesting to you as well. And this is histograms in what's called the red, the green, and the blue color space, if you wanted to break it down even more. All right, so that's what our info button is kind of good for to use. Now a few more things about the camera. On our lens, on the side right here, there are two switches. One is called autofocus, manual focus, AFMF, and now it's sort of autofocus. So whenever I push the button, it autofocuses for me. I take the picture. If I change to manual focus, now I can focus by hand. So, to emphasize, this right here, the big part of this lens, that allows me to zoom in and out, right? Not all lenses have that, but this one does. This part of the lens allows me to focus by hand. So sometimes when you're trying to shoot a scene and it's too dark, or every time you leave it on focus, every time you push the button, the camera's focusing on the wrong thing, just turn it off and just focus by hand. And you'll be able to see if it's in focus when you're looking through this eyepiece right here, and it looks in focus as you're looking through. All right, I'll just leave it on autofocus for now. The other button is called image stabilization. 
And what that means is that inside of this lens, there are these tiny little motors that move parts of the glass or the various components inside. Because sometimes, maybe if we're shooting at a slow shutter speed, we're moving the camera a little bit too much. Um, and what that will do, that stabilizer will allow, will hopefully make that camera or that picture a little bit more stable. So it won't be blurry, as blurry. Now, it doesn't work for very, very much shaky movement. So just consider that if you have a lot of shake or if you have a lot of movement going on and you're shooting at a slow shutter speed, that stabilizer really doesn't matter. I usually have it turned off because if we have it turned on, the battery will take a lot of power. The battery that's in here will take a lot of power for that stabilizer. So I just leave it off to make sure that I'm preserving or saving my battery power. Now, currently, if I push the button and I hold it down, it takes one picture. Okay, one picture one picture. I can shoot multiple frames if I wanted to. And that is this button right here. That's a single shot. This is multiple shots. So now if I push the button down and I hold it down, you can hear it take lots of pictures, right? You might want to do that with a very, very high action scene if there's a lot going on, and then you can change it. Just make sure that you get that decisive moment, that action that is frozen. All right, I'm just going to change it here instead. Single shot. Okay, now we can go back. All right. One other thing that might be of value to you, depends on for those of you who um, wear sometimes and don't wear glasses or contacts, there's a little, little dial right here. It's very hard to see. It's right next to the view finder. It's right there. And that's a diopter control. And you can turn that to plus or minus two at the maximum for people who are maybe have vision problems, problems seeing things that are far away because it's too blurry or too close. Now you can change that for your eye. Be aware that somebody may have borrowed this camera at some time and may have changed that thing. So when you look through here and you hit the autofocus and it looks like it's out of focus for you, that may be because this diopter has been changed. So you may just want to make, make sure that it's adjusted for your eye. That means you put your eye on here, you look through the camera, you hit autofocus, you make sure that whatever you want to focus on is in focus or that, that it should be in focus once you hear the beep sound. If it doesn't look like it's in focus for your eye, then you change this diopter control. Okay, emphasize again to play pictures back, push that button right there, then you can move forwards and backwards by using these buttons. Hit the trash button to erase a picture. I recommend you actually never erase pictures because you never know. You might, might not like it now, but you might like it later on. I mean, these are all terrible pictures. Of course, I'm going to erase these. Okay, so playing back. To open the flash, as I said, the button's right there, but we're never going to re really use that. As I mentioned before, this is the hot shoe. That's where we can put different types of other lenses or other controls, microphones. I'll show you how to use microphones for the video part later on. You can put those on there. There's also two small microphones and speakers built into this camera. They're not very good quality, but if you just need to do some basic video shooting, you can rely on the microphone um, that's in here. And then of course you can, on playback, you can hear it through these tiny little speakers. But again, the audio quality is not so good, so I wouldn't rely on these thing, these types of things. Shutter button, as I mentioned, you push there, and it uh, takes a picture for you. Halfway down, autofocus, all the way down, picture. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about, um, I'll just go over it a little bit in briefly in detail here to show you about how some of these buttons work, and that is involving the correct exposure for your picture. And that typically requires um, three elements or three components. That's the ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about those three items right now, but I'm just going to show you how you can change those on this camera, the buttons that are necessary for changing those three items. So let's first go to the top. And the ISO, which we can change right here, there's a button right here that says ISO, so we can push that button or change it. Or we can go directly um, onto the back, and we can change the ISO right here. Right? ISO goes from auto to 12,800. <clears throat> now, in these cameras, 
Um, once you get above 1600, so you go to ISO 32 or 64 or 12,800, and what you're getting is you're getting lower quality uh, images, although they are better for darker scenes, but the quality of the picture is not going to be so good. So my recommendation for these types of cameras is to use an ISO that's going to be between 100 to 1600. All right, 100 bright skies, a little bit, a little bit cloudy, 200 more cloudy, 400 indoor, um, even more indoor, darker, or then even fast sports, and when it's really dark inside, you can go with auto. But often, what happens if it's very dark, then the camera is going to be choosing these functions for you, and your picture quality may not be so good. Okay, so I would rec recommend ISO 100 to 1600 on these cameras. So you can either do it by the back here. Or you can do it by pushing this button here. And when you push that button, then of course it gives you the options again to change it. Okay? So that is the ISO. Now, let's look at the command dial, which is this right here. There's a few more things that I want to point out on this dial right here. There's M, A, V, T, V, P, and then you've got a few other settings, including on the settings, you've got looks like a woman's head, some mountains, a flower. And somebody running. So, if you want to, if you're going to take a portrait of somebody, you could change it to that head setting. If you're going to do landscapes, you could change it to that. If you're going to do close up or detail, macro photography on the flower, and if it's high action, you could use the sports setting. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily use those because it doesn't give you very much control of your pictures. Let's talk about some of these other, other settings. P setting means the camera is going to take care of all the controls. The only thing that you're going to change is the ISO. It will change the shutter speed for you and it'll change the aperture. And again, I'll explain what those are in another video. If you change it to TV, that's called time priority. That means you decide the shutter speed, how fast you're going to take the picture. If you want it to be a blurry picture or if you want it to freeze the action, right, you would use T and you could decide what, what your shutter speed will be. And then the camera will decide the aperture. You still decide the ISO, but you decide the speed and it decides the aperture. You go to AV, you decide the aperture. That means you're going to decide how big the opening is going to be inside the lens for light to come in and how much is in focus or not in focus. Again, I'll explain that in another video. So you choose the aperture, you choose the ISO, and the camera will decide how slow or how fast to take that picture, right? The shutter speed. Last option is M, and that's completely manual. That means you choose the aperture, you choose your shutter speed, and you choose your ISO. So you're in complete control on how you want to expose that picture. Um, I would suggest maybe most of the time using AV or aperture priority. That allows you to choose what is and what is not in focus. If you're on a bright scene, you can choose a 100 to 200 ISO. If you're getting a bit darker, 200 to 400 to 800 and even more dark inside 800 to 1600 and then let the camera decide um, your, your shutter speed. All right. So let's say, let's say you do have it set on P. That means when you push the button right here on the back, you push this button right here. And all you're doing right now is you're just doing autofocus. You're not changing any of the other settings on the camera. But you'll notice some other numbers back here. That means P, that is program mode. It's all going to do it itself. ISO, we already know, ISO 200 right here. And if you push this down a little bit, you'll see that we're going to get some new numbers right here. That is your shutter speed, 1 30th of a second now. That is your f-stop or your aperture at f3.5. Okay, so no matter what happens, the camera will decide those things. If I change it to time priority, now I look on the back and you'll see these two kind of yellow arrow, arrows next to my shutter speed. That means I can change that. And as I change that, the camera itself will change my aperture. Let's give you an example here. Let me actually change my ISO. I'm going to go up to something higher. I'm going to go to 1600. I'm in a dark room right now. Okay, I'm going to turn that over. All right, 1600 ISO. And now I can decide what I want my shutter speed to be, and the camera will make sure that it's going to get a good exposure. To change my shutter speed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this wheel right here. And as I roll this wheel, you can see these numbers changing right here. It's now at 1 over 200, 1 over 320, 1 over 500, 1 over 6, on and on and on. And when this f-stop starts blinking, 
that means basically you can't get a, an aperture smaller than 3.5. We're at the maximum on the low side, all right? So we need to bring this back up. Once it starts blinking, so now we're at 4.5. So as I change my shutter speed, you'll see that the camera automatically changes the f-stop for us. Okay, and it probably goes all the way up to f22, and that's the extent. Right now we're at the end. If we change it to aperture priority, right, now it's at AV. Now you see the yellow arrows are at the f-stop. So as I roll my wheel and change my f-stop, then the camera is going to change the shutter speed for me. And again, I'm at a maximum, set, or I'm at f3.5. I can't go any further down than that. Let's go all the way up to f22. I can't go any further than that. All right, so those are my limitations on this lens. f3.5 to f22. Now, the other choice is you want to go fully manual. That means you decide the shutter speed and your f-stop. So currently, M means manual, ISO 1600. And right now we have the yellow arrows at the shutter speed. So if I roll my wheel, it's going to change my shutter speed, but nothing's happening to my f-stop. Now, if I want to change my f-stop, I need to push another button. On the back of the camera, there's a button right here. It's called AV plus minus. I hold my thumb on that. And if I hold my thumb on that, you can now see that the arrows have changed from the shutter speed to the f-stop. And now when I roll my wheel, the f-stop is changing. Okay, take my finger off the button. Now it's going back to the shutter speed that I'm changing. Okay, to determine whether or not your picture is going to be actually exposed correctly, there are some other numbers right here, minus three to plus three, and then there's a zero in the middle. There's a little bar underneath there that's gonna go back and forth, and we wanna try to get that bar as close to zero as possible. That means that we are now exposing correctly. So let's go with F8. Let me change my f-stop, push that button, f8. Okay, now I need to get a shutter speed that's going to make hopefully this picture expose correctly. Now I'm at 1 80th of a second. I think that's way too slow. Let's try to make that, actually I think it's, I don't even know it's way too slow or too fast. No, oh, where is our, there comes our button right now, all right? So, F8 at 1 25th of a second, that's where that button is roughly right where we need it to be. If I change my shutter speed again, my f-stop now needs to be changed. I can push my AV button. Now I can roll the wheel again to get it close to zero. Okay, that in wheel shutter speed, just the wheel by itself is my f-stop. Right? And those are really the basic, most basic functions of the camera. Command dial, on off, and working with the various buttons and working with some menu controls as well. All right? And that is the basic function of the Canon 650D. Again, you can use a lot of those similar functions or pretty much in every single DSLR camera available.